You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show, you can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost Store in Wilmington, Ohio. At Caesar Creek Flea Market, stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit zombieoutpoststore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to zombieoutpoststore.com. Get 10% off a checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. In this digital society, making connections is quickly becoming a lost art form. Yet, if you are a small business owner, building your network is the only way you can get ahead. Can these skills be learned? You bet they can. Read Nose to Nose Networking, no-nonsense in-person networking tips from a master. Who's the master? Well, who better to teach networking and friend-building skills than a golden retriever? The author, Melanie Hope, takes the antics of Abigail and translates them into the human experience. Through Abby, you will learn how to set your intention, build a network, and get into and out of conversations with Grace. If you love the Dog Abby segments on Counterculture Wise Radio, you will love Nose to Nose Networking even more. Find it on Amazon and Barnes & Noble in hard copy, Kindle, and Nook. Visit CounterCultureWise.com for direct links. Greetings and salutations, CounterCultureWise listeners. This is Maximilian von Riegelbeiser inviting you and yours to listen to me and mine. Join me, my sisters Abby and Fritzy, and my weekly guests, my father Jim and Mumsy Melanie, for CounterCultureWise. Max, it's not your show. And we're not your guests, Max. We're the hosts. You may want to rein it in a little bit, buddy. Very well. Tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific at CounterCultureWise.com for our amazing live variety show. You can even chat with us. If you ask me, though, it should be called Counterculture Max. Counterculture Wise. Radio with heart in mind. Got a spare tire around that waist? Is your muffin top over the top? Do you binge eat uncontrollably? We are the government and we are here to help you. Here at our free FEMA weight loss camp, we have numerous ways to help you shed those unsightly unwanted pounds. FEMA, or Fatties, eating mitigated automatically has a communist style weight loss czar that specializes in centralized weight loss planning and communal extended fasting programs to shed that fat away in no time skin and boned means extra tone is the motto just remember there is no way you can do it on your own we will forcefully assist you into compliance Failure is not an option in this utopian wonderland. How fantastic. Typical workout regimes include digging ditches and restocking them with dirt. Building railways and more. Get life skills while you get lean. How do you join? Simple. Recite the Constitution in a public commons or violate the Patriot Act that includes simple misdemeanors. It's really that easy to get your own fenced-in slice of Americana. Stop being a fatty. The state is your daddy. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here. Even if it's just a dollar a month. 
Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. Are You Ready is an NP Media Group production and is the official broadcast of the Zombie Outpost in Wilmington, Ohio. The views and opinions expressed during this broadcast are those of the host and not that of the station, advertisers, or its affiliates. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You never know when an emergency is going to happen. Disaster can strike at any time. Whether stuck on the road, riding out a power outage, escaping a natural disaster, or surviving a doomsday apocalypse, what would you do? No matter the scale, whether one hour or one year, will you survive? You're about to hear what it takes to be prepared. Now ask yourself, are you ready? Have you ever heard the term prepper? What comes to mind? Some of you may think it's a crazy guy with a bomb shelter and an old army truck parked on the front lawn. Well, Prepper simply is a person who is ready for almost any emergency, small or large. It's no different than on a rainy day taking an umbrella with you when you leave your home or putting a coat on when it's cold outside. So maybe you think you're prepared for a brief time in that environment. But what if a few minutes turn into a day or even a year? I'm your host, Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper, and I'm going to use my over 25 years of prepping and survival experience and knowledge in this program to help you and your family prepare to handle almost anything from a small event, from a doomsday apocalypse. So get ready, because I'm prepared to enlighten you to seriously think, prepare, and answer the question, are you ready? And I want to hear anything you have to say about the subject, whatever you may have to offer. You see... It's important that we share our knowledge with each other, learn from each other, and help each other out. You see, the more prepared those around us are, the better your chances of survival will be when a disaster happens. Now, I'm sure everyone has heard the term zombies. Well, those are just those that are not prepared and come after whatever you have. Well, the call-in number is... 513-815-6336 if you want to be a part of the show. Again, that's 513-815-6336. Also, check out our live chat room on Spreaker. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker.com. Just go to the Are You Ready show, search it right there in the search bar. You can get there live through the website, nickpiercemedia.com. I post exclusive content on the home of Are You Ready on Facebook and on Instagram. Just go to Are You Ready Radio. You can interact with other members of the prepping community before, during, and after our broadcast. So share your knowledge. And again, if you want to call, the call-in number is 513-815-6336. So, here we go. In the past few years, many modern-day folks in the world have realized that not everything will be the way you are used to it. Okay? For some, it was easier to write out shortages, limitations, and unrest. Some were able to write it out better than others. Most people think that the ones that have been able to live, we'll say normally, are the doomsday preppers and survivalists that have tons of gear and have been getting ready for pandemics, lockdowns, civil unrest, and all other of the effects of them, okay? There seems to be this image people think of and say, yeah, he will be fine because uh, they will just sit in a bunker or wander out into the wilderness and eat nuts and berries away from civilization until everything is back to normal. Well, think about this. Is anything back to normal yet? Well, things are getting better, but slowly. And there's also other waves of events that have followed keeping life from getting back to normal. Look at everything from supply and shortages, inflation, the economy, uh, pending world war, problems at the southern border, not to mention the mental health and the spike in addiction and dependency. The thought that you were going to live in a bunker for what is now, what, three years? Eating MREs until things get back to normal is absolutely ridiculous. Maybe there's a very small percentage of human population that would even be able to completely hide from the world 
living off an infinite stockpile of dried beans, MREs, bottled water that they've amassed over 50 years to survive the three years so far. But is that even reality? Is it even humanly possible? No. It really isn't. See, humans are active creatures and naturally social. So already right there, it really doesn't work. How did people really get through these events? And what do you think you should know and learn for the next time? Now, I'm sure every one of us at one point said throughout the past few years, I should have had more of X, and I wish I knew how to Y. This episode is going to focus on the I wish I knew more of how to, and not so much the gear, which is the I wish I had more X. See, prepping is more than gear and stockpiling ammo. It's also about self-reliance. And you've, if you've listened to this show before, or even if you've had a conversation with me about some topics, you've heard me say this many times over the years, that the gear is only good if you know how to use it. Okay? That's one thing. I've also always mentioned that the gear you will need will depend on your skills. And at some point in the past few years whether you know it or not, you've realized current trends told you that you need to learn some skills. Whether you realize it or not. The problem is trying to figure out where to start and which new skills should be learned first. Okay, When it comes to self-reliance, learning the skills of Osara forefathers is the best way to get started. Okay, Think about what they had to know crossing the country on wagon trains, finding new territory, expand like gold rush, stuff like that. Well, you know, um, when it comes to self-reliance, learning the skills of our forefathers um, it is, it is a great starting point and a, a good basic uh, foundation to build off of. And in this episode, I'm going to break it down for you today. In this episode, I'm going to cover the skills to learn will say at home, the garden and outdoors, and even beyond the skills, uh, those skills, but those for survival and prepping. I also have this week's kitchen prepping tip of the week, prepping for pets, the prepper's financial segment of the week, and our prepping mistake of the week. So all this coming, uh, we're going to kick that off after this quick timeout. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You're listening to Are You Ready Radio. Stick around. We're just getting started. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show, you can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost Store in Wilmington, Ohio at Caesar Creek Flea Market stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit zombieoutpoststore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to zombieoutpoststore.com. Get 10% off at checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here, even if it's just a dollar a month. Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. 
You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. All right, everyone, welcome back. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You're listening to Are You Ready Radio or Are You Ready Prepping and Survival Radio. And this week we are talking about self-reliance skills, things that you need to learn, things that you may uh, wish you've learned, things that maybe you realize that you uh, uh, should have learned, or just you, maybe once I say them, you never realized that you even needed to know or learn that. Either way, that's the point of this whole episode. So when it comes to self-reliance skills, don't let the term scare you. Some of what I'm going to mention to you already, some of you may already know. Maybe you're already good at them. Maybe you make a living doing it. And some may be a hobby of yours. Some of them you may not know at all, but don't let it scare you. Some of these are actually quite easy, but either way, These skills are essential, or at least some of them anyway. Now, everybody accelerates uh, different ways, okay? Some people are very good at one thing. Some people are good at others. Now, when you start building your network, which we could probably do a whole other episode on, when you start building that network, your prepping network, as I call it, um, you're going to find folks that are really good at things. You're going to find folks that excel in things that are much better than you are. Here's one, for example. I think we maybe we mentioned this when it came to uh, the bug out or get home bag episode. I mentioned like a lock pick kit. Okay. Uh, my nephew, he's been working on learning the lock picking stuff. His whole um, plan is to be stealth, unnoticed, and it's a very good skill to have. For example. I mean, in a real fit-hits-the-shan situation, we've got to keep it clean for the, the airwaves. You know, we can't... It's fit-hits-the-shan. He wants to be able to get in and out of certain places. We'll say if there's a whole warehouse full of food. And not draw attention to the fact that it was broken into. And we'll say he can go in there, pick a lock, go in, get supplies, gear, stuff like that, and get out. Me, on the other hand... Good. You excel in that. I don't have necessarily the patience to really sit there and dink around with a lock. My thing is more, oh, we need to get in there? How fast? And I have multiple tactics, tools, devices, and all that to be able to breach the door and get in when I want to. Nothing stealth about my methods, though. So, again... As I'm going through the list of skills, you may be really good at certain things. Some things may not appeal to you, but you may know someone in your network that may be really good at that, or at least does it adequately, and it's good enough for now. The more they do it, the better they'll get, though. So, like I said, some of these are skills that you're going to need... And they're the essentials. So they may be needed during an emergency situation. And some of these skills are just simple tasks to make our lives easier. At least your lives easier anyway. You know, just like when I talk about starting to prep, I always start with the home. And that's where we're going to start now. Skills that you should learn for the home. Um... First, the most important, and I said this quite a few times, is just something as simple as a first aid kit, okay? And learning simple medical, um, administering like first aid. So put together a small first aid kit, which some of you may already have in your homes. See, this is not too complicated, folks. We're not spending a lot of money yet, and we're just learning how to do things. So you may have a first aid kit. At least you have some band-aids, some antiseptics, some ointments, and maybe some bandages and all that. Um, Learn which supplies you should have on hand at all times for any medical emergency. 
Now you take it a step beyond that. Maybe you know how to treat uh, minor cuts, scrapes, burns, and stuff like that. Well, now learn a new skill if you don't already. Learn CPR. Now learn CPR for not just adults, but also children and infants. Now, once you develop that, the next step beyond that is maybe learning how to prepare herbal remedies. Learn natural ways to treat simple health issues. So, simple. We're talking like maybe common cold, insect bites, and other minor, minor ailments. So right there, just based on a first aid kit that you've assembled or may already have, you're just bringing it to the next level. You're learning a skill beyond just what a Band-Aid and some alcohol can do. Now, next, and you probably heard me talk about this in many episodes, is the whole creating an emergency kit. Maybe it's your simple bug-out bag. Maybe it's just a tote of stuff that you need, like in the previous episode I was talking about when it came to apartment prepping. So if you live in an apartment you know, how to utilize space and and uh, what, you know, essentials you may need and all that. Uh, maybe just a small emergency kit in a tote or a bag somewhere in the closet, a box. It doesn't have to be fancy. With simple things that you need for, like, a power outage, severe weather and all that. And that's your little emergency kit. And some of this stuff, again, you may already have around the house. Or your apartment. Or your trailer. Your RV. Now, the next thing you do is, now that you have an emergency kit, you have a first aid kit, you built some more knowledge on your first aid kit. Learn how to heat your home without electricity. So, if you listen to some of the past episodes, I spoke about maybe sealing off rooms with blankets, some of those Mylar um, emergency blankets and all that. Maybe having an alternate heating source. How would you heat your home safely if you don't have electricity to turn your heater blower on and off? If you have a gas system, hey, the heat may come from the gas, but the circulation may come from the electric, or if you have baseboard heating, or if you have electric heat. And then even once once you do that, know how to use hand tools. There are so many people out there that they look at a screwdriver or a pair of pliers and they have something that they need to fix, they don't know which tool to grab first. There are people out there that wear shoes. I don't. But they'll use shoes as a hammer, and they're standing right there looking at a hammer. They'll use a really nice dinner fork to pull a thumbtack out of a wall. I mean, okay, it works. But remember when I was talking in a previous episode about just having simple hand tools? Well, you also need to learn how to use them. Not just which tool for the right job, but learn how to make simple repairs. Maybe how to fix a window. Do you have tape for a window? Do you have, um, you know, I mean, put something together. Disassemble something. Fix a doorknob. Fix a spring, a hinge. Minor, simple little repairs that there's some folks out there that just, oh my God, they open up the phone book, they freak out. It's like, um, there's a drip in my faucet. So, look around your home. What what things could go wrong? And you know how long it took for repairmen or anybody to get out during COVID? If there was an issue where you had to have someone out to repair something? Well, now they're coming out. But guess what? They don't even have the parts to be able to fix certain things. So, simple repairs and kind of stocking up on some spare parts of uh, expendables would be nice to, to have as well. Now, another thing you should also consider is, you know, you have your emergency supplies. Maybe you have enough food and you have the water and all that whether out, you know, and sit it out, ride it out for a particular time. But home security. Here's another skill. And it is a skill. 
Maybe just handling a gun. If you're not a gun owner. If you don't believe in guns and firearms. Well, what if an event happens where now you have a gun? Maybe someone broke into your house. Used the candlestick in the billiard room to take him out. You tied him up with the rope. And now you have the person's gun. How do you safely handle that, store it, unload it, or even be ready to use it if you have to? And you should also have a knowledge of other weapons if necessary to protect your home. Maybe just handling knives. The best way to use a knife, even if it's just a kitchen knife. A stick. So, again, these are all skills. Learning how to use maybe certain things that you may encounter and certain things that you have, which all help build self-reliance. And along with home security, pest control. Could you imagine you had all your stuff stockpiled? You have all this food and you're going to make it. But, you know, when the stores are empty, the vermin need to find it somewhere else. And they start coming into homes. And in some areas of the country, depending on the change of seasons and the environment that you live in, it's just natural to sometimes have a problem with, we'll say, mice. Large and urban uh, cities, they have problems with roaches. So how do you control the pests as part of your home security process as well? Because you're also trying to, um, you know, not just defend your home against invaders, but... These are smaller invaders that are going to come into your home to come after things that you have. You have animal zombies too, not just people zombies. So pest control. What do you use? What's effective? How do you mitigate attracting pests? And when you have them, what do you do to get rid of them? And, you know, that could be a whole other thing uh, by itself. And I could probably get into that more after this quick time out because we are coming up to a break. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about pest control here in just a moment. Stick around. Bottom of the hour. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You're listening to Are You Ready Radio. And, uh, of course, these commercials rudely interrupt my thoughts. But at least they keep you entertained, I hope. Well, I'll be right back. Stick around. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show, you can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home, on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost Store in Wilmington, Ohio, at Caesar Creek Flea Market, stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit zombieoutpoststore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to zombieoutpoststore.com. Get 10% off at checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. In this digital society, making connections is quickly becoming a lost art form. Yet, if you are a small business owner, building your network is the only way you can get ahead. Can these skills be learned? You bet they can. Read Nose to Nose Networking. No nonsense in person networking tips from a master. Who's the master? Well, who better to teach networking and friend building skills than a golden retriever? The author, Melanie Hope, takes the antics of Abigail and translates them into the human experience. Through Abby, you will learn how to set your intention build a network, and get into and out of conversations with Grace. If you love the Dog Abby segments on CounterCultureWise Radio, you will love Nose to Nose Networking even more. 
find it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble in hard copy, Kindle, and Nook. Visit counterculturewise.com for direct links. Greetings and salutations, CounterCultureWise listeners. This is Maximilian von Riegelbeiser inviting you and yours to listen to me and mine. Join me, my sisters Abby and Fritzy, and my weekly guests, my father Jim and Mumsy Melanie, for CounterCultureWise. Max, it's not your show. And we're not your guests, Max. We're the hosts. You may want to rein it in a little bit, buddy. Very well. Tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific at CounterCultureWise.com for our amazing live variety show. You can even chat with us. If you ask me, though, it should be called Counterculture Max. Counterculture Wise. Radio with heart in mind. Got a spare tire around that waist? Is your muffin top over the top? Do you binge eat uncontrollably? We are the government and we are here to help you. Here at our free FEMA weight loss camp, we have numerous ways to help you shed those unsightly unwanted pounds. FEMA or Fatties Eating Mitigated automatically has a communist style weight loss czar that specializes in centralized weight loss planning and communal extended fasting programs to shed that fat away in no time. Skin and boned means extra tone is the motto. Just remember, there is no way you can do it on your own. We will forcefully assist you into compliance. Failure is not an option in this utopian wonderland. How fantastic. Typical workout regimes include digging ditches and restocking them with dirt, building railways and more. Get life skills while you get lean. How do you join? Simple. Recite the Constitution in a public commons or violate the Patriot Act that includes simple misdemeanors. It's really that easy to get your own fenced-in slice of Americana. Stop being a fatty. The state is your daddy. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here, even if it's just a dollar a month. Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. Yep, and here we go again. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You're listening to Are You Ready Radio. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. Thank you for supporting the program. Really do appreciate it. And here we are this week. uh, We're continuing on with self-reliance skills to learn because it's not just about the gear. It's also about what you know. So uh, before the break, we're talking about some home security and all that. And along with home security also comes defending your home from pests. Bugs, vermin, mice, rats, all that. And depending on where you live, um, you're going to need some uh, different things to really um, control uh, pests. Because let's think about it. You're not going to have an exterminator come out. It will say, uh, for example, like it was maybe about three years ago. And if uh, you got vermin and you got mice or bugs or something getting in to your food, um, not only does it ruin your food storage, but it's not good for your health either. So in some of my gear that I have when it comes to the bug-in situation stuff, uh, the shelter-in-place uh, stockpile, um, I have things like those sticky traps that are good for like mice, rodents, all kinds of bugs you can put all over, as well as just regular spring mouse traps, rat traps, and an assortment of different sprays. Now, um, of course, I like to avoid the sprays when I can, of course, the time when I had Magic the Prepper Cat. 
because you, you really don't want to do a lot of spraying. Um, so you got to keep in mind what you can do, if especially if you have pets. Um, so uh, you know, knowing how to use them, what to do, what to what to look for, what to watch out for, what the signs are when it comes to maybe pests and uh, you know like bugs, rodents, all that in your home. Uh, like I said, if they can't find it out there, they're going to come inside to get it. So knowing how to control that is another valuable skill, being able to identify a problem and then solve the problem and making sure that you have the stuff you need. Uh, now moving on from that, another great self-reliance skill that you should know, um, and again, this is specifically we're going through the home list first, we're starting in the home, is the sterilized purify and filter water for drinking. Um, we've talked about in past episodes about, you know, how to source water and how to safely handle it. And, uh, just in your home alone, if for some reason you don't, uh, maybe the water supply is compromised and there may be boil water advisories or there may be no water at all, how to source purify and make that water safe to drink or turn it into potable water as they call it is a very valuable skill to have because again, you may not have long-term water storage, especially if you're just starting out or if you have very limited space. We discussed that in a previous episode when it came to prepping in your apartment or apartment life prepping, whatever you want to call it. Uh, another val valuable skill to learn is how to use an oil lamp, um, how to use it for lighting, and uh, even how to make one. Okay, They're actually very easy to make. I mean, you can make it out of a jar with a lid, metal lid, preferred. And even just some cotton balls that you can, or gauze, that you can um, turn into a wick. And as long as you have the f the fuel for it or the fluid, um, any non-combustible fluid. So gasoline is out, but you can use kerosene, diesel, uh, tiki torch fluid. Uh, there's a number of options out there that you can use uh, to fuel an oil lamp. And uh, just knowing how to do that especially if you don't have a lot of candles uh, stockpiled so far, will be very handy. Again, this is all about not buying the gear in this episode. It's about skills to learn to survive when it comes to prepping and all that. Now, as far as um, you know, different things for uh, the home, uh, knowing how to put out a grease fire. You know, a lot of times folks just think that, oh, we'll just run some water on it or just charge that fire extinguisher if it's going to put out a grease fire, but most fire extinguishers really don't. So, like I said in the past episodes, baking soda. Baking soda is a great way to, to just douse it. Of course, smother it. Just rob it of oxygen. Um, never put water on it. Know the best way to stop it instead of, to stop any fire instead of spreading a fire, period, is great. Um, as far as, like, you know, other tips in the kitchen, I'm going to say maybe, like, cooking from scratch. Um, simple things like making pastas, breads, and sauces. Um, so if you have, we'll say, fresh produce, how to make sauces from them, like tomato sauce, salsa. Um, I mean, there's so many sauces that you can make from scratch, which is developing simple skills you can do. Um Cook on a wooden stove is another one I was thinking of. You know, learn to make a real meal without electricity. Because if you don't have electricity, do you know how to make a fire to cook over, a, a, like, on a fire pit if you're able to make one? Or if you have a wooden stove? Um, those are all very handy skills. Uh, another thing when it comes to food and all that, learning how to preserve food. Maybe if you have a bunch of food in your fridge and the power's out for a long period of time and you may not be able to eat all of it, you know, again, you start with your refrigerator, then you move to the freezer, then you go to your dried can and all that. But um, learning how to preserve what food you have, learning how to can it, ferment it, dehydrate it, um, and, and really those good food storage principles is very handy. Uh, meal planning. You know, sometimes you may be looking at a whole bunch of stuff that you have, and you may not have every, you know, you may have components for recipes that you and your family eat all the time, uh, but you're looking at things now, and you're just like, well, the store's closed, or, you know, the meat department doesn't have meat, or, 
you know, there's none of the vegetables we normally eat, and you may be looking around at your pantry. Um, maybe just being knowledgeable and being able to plan a meal with the ingredients that you have and being creative. Um, I love um, this one cooking show on TV called Chopped. You know, that Iron Chef is another good one. That one's a little older. But a show called Chop, where you get this mystery basket of ingredients and you have to make something to impress judges. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, it makes a fun game, too. Uh, I mean, sometimes a family and friends of mine play it, where people bring over mystery ingredients, and I sit there and I make this culinary either excellent meal or, or a complete disaster. But uh, I try. Uh, being able to plan out a meal based on ingredients that you have or just that just get thrown at you is another very valuable skill. And when it comes to cooking meals, oh, how to care for cast iron. You know, folks make mistakes a lot with cast iron. And, you know, actually, you know what, this brings me to a kitchen tip of the week. Burp, 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 burp. So here we are, cast iron cookware. Now, if you're only able to get one set of cookware, you should have some cast iron. That's my general rule. In past episodes, I talked about in my home, you know, I have my in-home cookware, um, and I also have a set that I use outside on the grill, fire pit, and even camping. However, I still only have one set of cast iron cookware, and I use it almost everywhere. See, cast iron can be used on a stovetop oven and the broiler, and that's inside your home, and can be used outside on a grill, a fire, a camp stove, you know, just as well. There's a bit of a difference cooking on cast iron, from what I've noticed, and a lot of folks will say that. And you should learn how to be a good chef using it, period. There's also a, um, a different way that you should care for it. This is not something you just throw in the dishwasher. Okay, so first, you always want to wash it by hand. Avoid soap. Now, I say avoid soap. A lot of purists out there, including me, Say never, ever, ever, ever use soap on cast iron. You're crazy. You're going to ruin it. Well, so avoid soap. I'll go back to that in a second. If you need it, you can use a pan scraper, you know, for stuck on food. I like to use like steel wool. Um, you know, for, for stubborn stuck on food, you can also simmer it in a little bit of water for about three to five minutes. Um, then use the scraper. So, um, yeah, when it comes to... Well, I'll, I'll get to the soap thing. Once you've cleaned it, dry it immediately and thoroughly with a cloth, paper towel. They always say lint free, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you notice a little black residue on the towel from the inside cooking side of the pan, it's just seasoning. It's perfectly normal. You're not going to die. Now, if it's on the outside, you know, the part that was maybe over the fire, well, that needs to go. So keep scrubbing. Uh, that could be like some sort of creosole buildup that you don't want on your pans. Now, um, once, you, once you've cleaned it and you've dried it, you want to oil it. So take a very light layer of... Cooking oil is fine. Manufacturers may have like cast iron oil and stuff like that that they like to sell you. It's probably just cooking oil. I have no idea what it is. I mean, we know it's not motor oil. But cooking oil is fine, olive oil, extra virgin, whatever kind of edible oil you have is perfectly fine. You just want to rub it onto the surface of your cookware. Um, use a paper towel to wipe the surface until there's no oil residue that's still on there. Um, all sides handles everything, the whole thing, not just the inside. You want to, because you just washed it. Now what you're doing is with that oil, you're kind of protecting it. And uh, then, of course, store it. Now, when I stack mine, I like to put like a paper towel in between each piece, and sometimes there may have some residue from a fire on the bottom of one pan that may stack inside the other. 
So I don't want it to come in contact with the food side of the pan. So I just kind of throw a paper towel uh, in between. Um, but you don't have to. Some folks say never to do that because of moisture. Some folks say that is a better idea. Just use some cheesecloth or a lint-free towel to do that so that the moisture doesn't on contact collect in there. And there's there's a lot of different schools of thought when it comes to cast iron. And that kind of reminds me of the soap thing. So, Lodge, the leading manufacturer of cast iron cookware, and they didn't pay me a dime to say that, in full disclosure. Um, mine's Lodge. I like Lodge. Most of mine is. Um, they, they say that you can use small amounts of soap. Now, the problem with that is cast iron is porous. So, that soap, it kind of ruins the seasoning of the pan and if it's not washed, rinsed, or stored, oiled, and all that really well, uh, there is a chance that your food's going to have a weird taste. The other thing is, once you soap a cast iron pan, you really want to make sure that you burn that off and re-season the cast iron. Um, by seasoning the cast iron, um, what I typically do is it's just, again, very light coat of oil if soap ever does come in contact with it, and it just sits in an oven and bakes for a couple hours. I, I know that sounds a little extreme, but about 450 degrees for a few hours, um, sometimes with a little bit of salt in there, uh, it just kind of helps restore um, the pan that between the heat and the salt, and the moisture and all that, it, it kind of dissipates. And um, I, I did make a mistake way, way, way back, many, many, many years ago, and I had my first cast iron pan, and I used soap and water, and I kept noticing that it just, everything seemed a little off. So um, I'm on the side of the purist when it comes to never, never, ever using soap. So, um, yeah, that's our uh, prepping kitchen tip of the week. If you have anything you want to add or any of the tips that you want to share, our chat room is open. Chime in. Just go to Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And uh, shoot us a little message there, and it's fun chatting uh, during the broadcast. So I want to continue on now with uh, some more basic home skills. So basic home self-reliance skills to learn uh, outside of the kitchen. And there's advanced skills for the kitchen that I want to talk about, but I want to get to some of these basics before we get to the top of the hour break. Um, one of them uh, is learn to sew basic things. Sewing. You know, this may include very simple things like hemming pants, making, we'll say, simple curtains, replacing buttons. Um, if you're uh, feeling very ambitious, try making your own clothing doesn't come out right well then you have a home circus play that you guys can put on so uh you know sewing a lot of times people you know especially during shutdown a lot of tailors a lot of places were closed down and there were certain alterations that people um wanted to make um maybe they did have certain places they needed to go uh, maybe there were some events that were still happening even if it was in small scale or distant distanced from everybody yes all that but, um, you know, it, certain things, uh, you know, it, people sometimes just sat there saying like, man, I'm not working today. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. You can't go anywhere. Everything's shut down. And sometimes, you know, what drives me crazy is when I have a bunch of projects that I need to get done. And uh, sometimes I'm just tied up with something else, but I'm sitting there looking at it, wanting to get it done, but I never get it done. And eventually I do. You know, some folks just sat at home just like, you know, hey, um, what if we can get, um, you know, go through this pile of stuff that, I know, one thing needs a button, the hem on these pants, are, you know, need to be shortened, or maybe there's a slight tear here. Um, you know, uh, sitting down there and tackling those projects when you had nothing else to do, if you just knew how to do it instead of dropping it off somewhere for someone to do, um, not just helps you pass the time, keeps you occupied. And, um, you know, it, 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 I'd feel like a greater sense of accomplishment. Like, hey, look what I did. I did it. 
Now, knitting, crocheting, needle pointing. I don't know about needle point, but, you know, I guess it's kind of up there. But uh, needle pointing, I guess, is more craft embroidery type thing. Uh, but knitting and crocheting. Uh, maybe the weather was getting colder and, you know, you're like, wow, it would be nice to have a bunch of, you know, nice heavy blankets and we can, you know, but, well, where are we going to get blankets or, you know. Well, knitting and crocheting your own. You know, another handy skill that sometimes, I mean, I kid around a lot about is basket weaving. Uh, weaving a basket. Uh, you know, sometimes you're just like, oh, we just go to the store and buy baskets. Well, I kind of lumped this one kind of it, it's a nice home skill to learn um, but I find it more practical because I'm not a basket fan uh, when it comes to in-home but when it comes to wilderness survival or anything like that knowing how to weave to make a basket will say just to catch fish in uh, carry uh, you know materials uh, har- harvesting stuff foraging stuff comes in very handy if you don't have anything to put it in or maybe you don't have a fish net, or you don't have a fishing kit, or you know, line and poles and stuff like that in a wilderness situation. Uh, learning, uh, you know, how to weave a basket to collect uh, anything from fish to berries uh, could be very handy. All right, let's go back into the kitchen for a bit to talk about some more advanced home skills that you may want to learn. I'm going to say may want to learn. I think some of these are very handy. Some of these may not be for everybody. It really all depends on how um, much of a homemaker and how ambitious you really are. Now, I can't say that everything on this list that I put together, um, I know in this section here anyway. Uh, bone broth. Learn how to make broth. Okay, I thought of this one. Uh, let's see. It was, yeah, Thanksgiving of 2020. Uh, there was no stock in any of the stores to make, um, what I use, uh, for gravy and the stuffing and other things in the recipes that I make for Thanksgiving dinner. So I had to make my own. Now I'm no stranger to making my own stock, but typically if I know I'm going to make my own stock, I have bone to do it. Now, of course, was you know some vegetables, and you know sometimes they're just about close to the past their prime, but still good. I'm not talking about rotting vegetables here, and you can just grab whatever vegetables the store has. Um, and I was had some cheesecloth, and I, you know, I just needed the bone. So, I mean, that's the difference between beef and turkey and chicken and vegetable broth is uh, some of the meat flavor that goes into it. Now, I have a big stock pot, and I know how to make a broth. My problem was, I didn't have a bone. The butcher counter that I normally get my bones from didn't have any bones. Remember, we're talking about limitations and shortages still then. Um, anytime I could get to the store, I was busy doing something, and I, you know, they were closing early. Some days they weren't even open. So, uh, you know, it's really hit and miss in a food store then. Well, whenever I carve my Thanksgiving turkey... All my turkeys have four legs. It's just this thing I've been doing for years. It's been a tradition. When I carve the turkey, there are four legs on every turkey. You can buy the turkey. You can cook it. You give me that turkey out of the oven with no other turkeys around. There'll be four legs on the dark meat platter. The little thing I do. Um, And the kids love it. Well, with the third leg of the turkey, I had to slip the third leg out of the turkey that one year, and some vegetables... I made my own broth, turkey broth, that then I could use to make the stuffing and the gravy and everything else that I needed. So, um, you know, th- th- it's a very valuable skill if you know how to make your own broth. Um, now, some other things like making cheese. Um, one, one Christmas, someone actually got me a cheese-making kit. He said, oh, this is perfect for the prepper that you are. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And it had, like, all the stuff and the instructions and all that to make cheese. And I'm still waiting for my nephew and I to actually do it together. Uh, another thing, uh, churning butter. Actually, it turns out it's really not that hard. I actually watched a video of it while I was kind of coming up with this list because I was like, you know, being able to make your own butter, because for a while there, you could barely find enough butter in the store. 
And there's a lot of recipes that we use butter in. Everything from like the pies that my mom makes to, um, you know, the cookies around Christmas and just cooking in general. You know, butter was always this thing. And I'm like, man, I should get one of those little butter, butter churners. And I'd sit there like the Amish churning my own butter. Well, it made it on my list when I was thinking about it. Now, I haven't done it yet. Uh, along with kind of churning butter is like making homemade yogurt. From what I understand, that's very easy to do. Uh, how to render lard. And rendering lard is an important step for the next skill, making your own soaps and shampoos. A lot of soaps have lard in them. Um, You also want to kind of learn how to make your own cleaning products. Think about it. I don't know if you've watched any of the tips from the bunker videos on YouTube that I've posted, especially during when everything was shutting down. Um, Kind of did like this weird quirky old brown kind of good each thing but only in a liquor store when it came to is alcohol really going to work what does all this mean and the difference between like proof and percentage and all that of alcohol so um can you actually make disinfectants out of things and i also um went to different stores talking about what they had on the shelves that people were overlooking that can be used as disinfectants and cleaning products so um check out that video that's a good one and we are on our first Oh, top of the hour right now. Uh Uh-oh, that's what that music means. Well, stick around. We'll be right back. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show... You can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost Store in Wilmington, Ohio. At Caesar Creek Flea Market, stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit zombieoutpoststore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to zombieoutpoststore.com. Get 10% off a checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. In this digital society, making connections is quickly becoming a lost art form. Yet, if you are a small business owner, building your network is the only way you can get ahead. Can these skills be learned? You bet they can. Read Nose to Nose Networking, no-nonsense in-person networking tips from a master. Who's the master? Well, who better to teach networking and friend-building skills than a golden retriever? The author, Melanie Hope, takes the antics of Abigail and translates them into the human experience. Through Abby, you will learn how to set your intention, build a network, and get into and out of conversations with Grace. If you love the Dog Abby segments on CounterCultureWise Radio, you will love Nose to Nose Networking even more. Find it on Amazon and Barnes & Noble in hard copy, Kindle, and Nook. Visit CounterCultureWise.com for direct links. Hey, how you doing? This is Magic Pierce inviting you and yours to listen to some good friends of mine that have a show too. Did you really think my daddy is the only one that just runs his mouth all the time and that's the only thing I listen to? (laughs) No, it's not. I got a show I listen to on Sundays. Join host Max and his co-host, uh, my hottie Fritzy, and of course my good friend Abby on Counterculture Why Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. They have their own human guests, Melanie and Jim, each week. They don't meow a lot, but you get what they're saying. Now let me tell you, you have to go to CounterCultureWise.com. Use your paws to play with the mouse and scroll down to the on-the-air button on the right to hear their show. Just click on that. After that, watch them on Periscope like I do. Daddy gives me a little mouse to play with, and I get parts the whole time. It's a great show. Check it out. CounterCultureWise.com. 
If you don't tune in, I get cuckoos on you. Thank you so much for that ringing endorsement magic. It warms the orange hearts of me and Abby and the gray heart of Fritzy to hear you say such amazing things about our show. I'm pretty sure that Mumsy and Father have pink hearts, so we will assume their hearts are warmed too. Ah, forget about it. I got you guys. Good peoples. Got a spare tire around that waist? Is your muffin top over the top? Do you binge eat uncontrollably? We are the government and we are here to help you. Here at our free FEMA weight loss camp, we have numerous ways to help you shed those unsightly, unwanted pounds. FEMA, or Fatties, eating mitigated, automatically has a communist-style weight loss czar that specializes in centralized weight loss planning and communal extended fasting programs to shed that fat away in no time. Skin and bone means extra tone is the motto. Just remember, there is no way you can do it on your own. We will forcefully assist you into compliance. Failure is not an option in this utopian wonderland. How fantastic. Typical workout regimes include digging ditches and restocking them with dirt, building railways and more. Get life skills while you get lean. How do you join? Simple. Recite the Constitution in a public commons or violate the Patriot Act that includes simple misdemeanors. It's really that easy to get your own fenced-in slice of Americana. Stop being a fatty. The state is your daddy. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here, even if it's just a dollar a month. Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. All right, so here we are. Yes, I lost track of time there. I thought I had a little bit more time, but then I was so rudely interrupted by our wonderful sponsors, though, and we need them. They help keep this show going, or at least on track anyway, or I'll just sit here and talk for three hours, and uh, uh, the bills won't get paid. But uh, yeah, I'm very glad that uh, you know the other folks listening help uh, help that out. But uh, we do need our sponsors, and I know I pick on them a lot. And um, I don't know. I like our sponsors. I mean, one of our main sponsors is Counterculture Wise. I don't know if you ever heard their show. Um, they're on Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And uh, they got a great show, so you should definitely check them out if you have nothing to do on Sundays. If you have something to do on Sundays, just let them know that you're canceling it. Um, because you want to go listen to Counterculture Wise. Uh, you'll have a lot of fun uh, on that one, uh, listening to them. But uh, I thought we had, I was th- going to get through the uh, in home uh, skills to learn for inside before we went outside to play, but I just wanted to go play outside. But uh, let me just round this off real quick so we can move on to where I wanted to be after the top of the hour break. So before the break, I was rambling furiously to get through the whole um, uh, part when it came to uh, cleaning products and all that. But there are a couple more skills I want to touch on before we uh, move on to the next segment and go play outside. So again, these are all the in-home skills. Now, another thing that you want to learn is uh, how to 
grind your own grains, uh, certain things to use, um, you know, experiment with essential oils. Uh, oils are also uh, great. They also are very helpful when making the cleaning products, uh, making your own soap. I think I mentioned that when it came to the rendering lard. Uh, now, here's an interesting one, and this one came up in a conversation that I was having with a buddy of mine the other day. Um, I said, yeah, okay, making your own bread is great, and we are talking about that, and and uh, that's great because, you know, I mean, everybody's got flour and, you know, and all this and everything. Goes, um, I noticed that your yeast, you know, every time you go to do a bread or something, you always look disappointed because I always buy yeast and I forget about it because I don't make a lot of bread. And I know I'm guilty of my own thing when it comes to store what you eat and eat what you store. And then I have certain things that I end up not using and the yeast packages are one of them. I don't buy a great deal of it because I don't bake a lot. But once in a while I like to just to I, I make my own pizza crust. I have a, a Brooklyn pizza crust recipe that I love um, that I was able to bring with me to Ohio from someone that I knew back home in Jersey and knew them in New York and have a uh, pizza crust recipe that I sworn to only make, never share. So don't even ask me for it. And who knows if that's even the real legit recipe, but it's very close. Um, but I do have to make it with New Jersey or New York water. So that's the other thing. I have to import the water to actually make this because water actually does make all the difference. I've tried it when I got out to Ohio with the water here, and it's eh, not the same. But when I bring water in from New Jersey, New York, whenever some family visits or I get it shipped to me or I go out to visit, uh, that pizza crust comes out amazing. Same recipe. I do everything exactly to the grain of every ingredient. Well, uh, when it comes to making bread and all that, we were talking about this, and they're, you know, busting my chops. It's like, yeah, you always got that yeast, blah, blah. And you're always running over. It's like, hey, does my wife need the yeast and all this? It's going to go bad, and she likes baking, so um, we always appreciate it. But uh, why don't you just make your own yeast? I'm like, huh? Make my own yeast. They said, yeah, here's one for your show. You're going through home skills and all that. This is how the conversation came up with what I'm doing for my next show. And I said, yeah, I got a whole list of things I've been jotting down and just going through my mental catalog and, you know, just some notes in, in my, uh, you know, binders and notebooks and stuff that I've made over the years. And he said, well, how about this one, sourdough starter? I said, sourdough starter, this sounds harder than making bread itself. No, nah, just use that sour, you make your own sourdough starter. I said, okay. So I did a little research on this. And I'm like, hmm, after a conversation, just to make sure that I'm getting the accurate information. Um, but yes, yeah, sourdough starter, uh, you can use in lieu of yeast. So I don't think I'm ever going to buy a package of yeast again. This is actually quite easy to make. You can go online. There's many, many recipes for sourdough starter, simple ways to make it. I did some research on this. If you have the ingredients to make bread, you have the ingredients to make sourdough starter um, from what I'm seeing in my research. So uh, typically um, the, the ratio is a little different. So instead of like a little package of dry yeast, you're going to need, you know, a cup of the sourdough starter that you make with the ingredients you already have. So this is a very valuable skill because, yes, there were times when it's just like, Ugh, that bread doesn't look in its prime. So, you know, it was nice, you know, especially when you couldn't even order a pizza. You know, being able to make your own pizza dough and with the toppings that you have. And, you know, I mean, I came up with some pretty interesting pizzas during pizza night. Um, you know, just using whatever ingredients we had. And, uh, you know, so, so that, that, that's a very valuable skill to learn, uh, just making your own sourdough starter, which is no different than yeast. And and what I found when I experimented with this the other day, because I like to play with things before I even start talking about it, uh, just to make sure, you know, maybe see if there's any tips or tricks about it. Um, not very versed in it yet, but from what I did with it, 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 it kind of gives it that sourdough bread taste to anything you're making. So no matter what bread recipe you're using, it, it, it gives it its own unique flavor. And I really like it, and I'm 
probably going to use this technique next time I actually make pizza just to use in the dough. And I love sourdough bread. So I don't know why I never really looked into this. And um, I'm really glad that I did. So, yeah, learning how to make your own sourdough starter is a, is a great um, thing. All right, then. So moving on to the outdoors. Yes, it's time to play outside. So we've already pretty much covered almost all the essential indoor in-home skills that you should learn to be self-reliant. Uh, going to the outdoors now as far as gardening skills. Now, in the past episode, I probably spoke about some of this, um, but that was really mostly the types of different gardens that you can grow for survival, your survival gardens or prepper gardens. Um, when it comes to the skills uh, with just gardening in general, there are actually quite a few, and I was even doing some research on this prior to the show, uh, just to see if there's anything I was kind of leaving out on my list. And there's some things that I never really thought of that I'm going to share with you that and why they'd kind of be important. So just learning basic gardening techniques is very important. I mean, just to be able to plant a few um, edibles, hopefully, uh, like edible, uh, you know, vegetables and uh, different herbs and spices would be nice. But... Um, you know, really just kind of learning how to start it from seed, um, the type of soil, um, how to care for the plants, where to plant them, um, you know, and really uh, some some of the very basics are already on some of the seed packets that you can buy, such as how far down to plant them, how often to water them, how long they take to germinate, when you should plant them. So uh, some of that may be right in front of you if you've ever planted seeds before. And you'll see how easy some of it kind of is. But I'm sure there's other techniques such as, you know, harvesting them, when to harvest them. Um, you know, like tomatoes, just caring for them once they start coming up. Uh, same thing with, like, pole beans and, and all kinds of things. Uh, saving seeds is, is you know, another minor skill um, that sometimes gets overlooked when it comes to storing them. So, um, first of all, are you getting the right seeds that'll make plants that you that'll keep coming back are the seeds fertile are they heirloom is pretty much the term for those and what seeds do you save how do you save them how do you store them in order to use them for the next season um, sometimes you can go to a place that has like organic or you know vegetables like farmer markets and all that I once bought a pumpkin, and I have pumpkin forever now. Uh, sometimes I can't get rid of the pumpkin because it's coming back every year. Uh, same thing with okra. I'm not a big fan of okra, but um, I decided to plant some okra seeds, and next thing you know, uh, they just keep coming back. And some of these are just grown right from the fruit or the vegetable that I bought at a farmer's market. And I really didn't know at the time many years ago the difference between them until I really started looking into it and starting to learn some skills when it comes to gardening. Of course, once I finally had some property to do it on. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot just from talking to some neighbors that showed me different things, talked to me about different things. Um, but then, you know, how about uh, learning fruit tree pruning? There's another skill. I found out that really if you don't prune the fruit tree right, you really don't get fruit the next season, or you may not get any more fruit throughout that season. Um, even like cutting and stacking hay, you know, some folks may overlook certain things like this because, uh, well, what do you really need it for? Well, you never know. Maybe if you know a skill and someone's not able to do it and you're willing to do it, you can use that skill to also barter. And um, another very handy skill is just composting methods. And I was thinking about that when I was talking about certain indoor things such as uh, cutting down on the uh, on your waist, but um, I, I cut it from that section of the list and, and decided to move it down along with this with composting because, it, you know, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, I mean, yeah, there's the cutting down on waste on the green aspect and being green and, and all that, which which is great. Nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to composting, it's a matter of taking the waste that you have and learning how to and what to 
compost. And actually, you know what? That brings you to probably our pet prepping tip of the week. Speaking of compost, it reminds me of a funny story um, with one of my neighbors. So, when it comes to composting, and this is how it ties into the pet, uh, your dogs and cats and all that, particularly. Um, my neighbor had a compost pile going, and I was going to start making one too a few years ago. One of our neighbors decided it was a great idea to uh, contribute to the pile with his dog's droppings. Now, I found out from my neighbor... And I, I was not composting yet. I found out from my neighbor that you never put the droppings from animals that are uh, carnivorous, we'll say, that eat meat. And it turns out that there's a reason for this. So if you're composting and you think that, well, manure is used in fields and on crops and stuff, and it's perfect for uh, fertilizer because that's, in essence, kind of what you're using compost for. See, compost is a natural process. It, it reduces organic waste and allows organic material to decompose and become usable as nutrients um, for plants that you're growing. I, I guess, in, in short, that, that's the best way to explain it. But it turns out that um, your, um, your droppings from your pets, especially if they're meat eaters, are not good. See, it turns out that it's not recommended because... Um, the droppings, um, the animals carry a wide variety of parasites and pathogens. And what they do is they reside in particularly dog's intestines. Now, by putting that in your compost pile, those parasites and pathogens don't break down. They're more resilient to most home um, compost piles. So bacterial diseases such as um, salmonella and uh, other parasites like hookworm, tapeworm, roundworm, and all that, would it, there would be a risk of passing that through the compost um, from infected droppings into the soil and eventually um, could pass on, could be passed on to you and pose a danger to you as a human. And, of course, back to the animal's health as well. So um, when you're composting, it's a good idea to just dispose of their um, fecal matter, their droppings, um, in your garbage, uh, scoop the litter box, pick up after your dog and all that, and dispose of them in the trash, the garbage. Do not, or flush them, whatever, uh, do not add them to your compost pile. So there it is. And there are so many other things when it comes to the garden. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, we could have used that as a prepper mistake of the week, but I'll come up with something for that here. Um, a couple other skills, though, is maybe building a greenhouse. You know, maybe you live in an area uh, where you don't have an extended summer or a decent amount of summer warmth to, to really grow a lot of uh, the vegetables and fruits or plants that you want. Well, uh, a greenhouse is a great option if you have the room to put it and you know what you're doing. Another thing is learning different types of gardening methods, such as like with a greenhouse or like a raised bed method or no-till. Uh, there's, there's a ton of different methods out there that you can do tons of searches for online once you know that, hey, maybe this is something I should be learning how to do. Now, there's other things like planting an orchard. I mean, that sounds like a big job. Well, you know, seeds are seeds. It just depends on how big the plant is and if you have room for it to grow. But knowing what you're doing is also very important, just like pruning fruit trees and all that. Um, you know, along with a lot of this is just knowing a little bit about crop rotation as well. And that's one big thing here where I live is like one year corn will be on one side of the road uh, on one farm and then soy on the other. And then the following year it changes. So soy will be on the corn side the next year and corn would be on the other. Well, it turns out that 
apparently different plants when they grow affect uh, the pH and, and other things in the soil, nutrients that one may depend on that the other one discards throughout its growing season uh, that's beneficial to the other. So, you know, it, it really turns out there is quite a bit of science behind some of this. And once you understand some of the basic concepts, uh, you're, you're able to grow very successful, if not a whole field and crop in an orchard, but at least a garden. And um, maybe you have chickens. Maybe you have uh, livestock that eats grains and stuff. So learning how to grow or... Um, you know, produce food for them that you don't have to rely on a feed farm when some of these grain mills were closed and some of these feed places were closed uh, was a very valuable skill to keep your livestock alive because if your livestock is alive, that depends on that, and you're growing food for them, well, you're now um, not dependent on all these outside sources that were shut down or had very limit, uh, limited inventory um, or resources for you to actually purchase. Another great one I love, and, and I'm starting to play around with this this year, and we're still pretty early. It's only the beginning of May. But already uh, some wild berry plants are starting to come out. So I'm actually going to allocate um, a whole section where I'm just going to let them come up, and I'm going to transplant uh, certain ones that I can into that area. And I'm actually going to create my own little berry patch, which I'm kind of very excited about because, I mean, I love berries. And uh, not just that, I mean, they're very nutritious, but they're also a good morale booster. I mean, it's like the candy of the wild as far as I'm concerned, that and honey. I do want to give you our last tip when it comes to gardening before we move on to the next category. And that brings me to our Prepper Financial segment of the week. And this one has to do with creating your own fertilizer. You know, a lot of times folks will go out to the store and spend a lot of money on fertilizers, not just for their lawn, but for their gardens and and everything that they try to grow. Now, there are a lot of great alternatives that you may have that you use in everyday life that you can use as fertilizer, and it's just a matter of quantity at that point. So, um, coffee grinds, eggshells, uh, vinegar, fish tank water fireplace ashes, and even making your own compost, which is something we were just talking about as far as composting and all that. All these items make really good fertilizer for your gardening, and a lot more people should do it. Think about how much money it saves you when you don't have to run to the store and spend that much, and you can put that money to work for you somewhere else when it comes to either what food you're going to store, the garden itself, maybe even learning a new skill. So uh, think about the options that are around to make your own fertilizer and what you may already be doing that typically you may just throw out in the garbage um, to really um, keep your wallet with more cash in it and put your waste to work around your own home. What's our financial tip of the week? And we also have a brief timeout coming up. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio. When we come back from the break, we're going to go to some more outdoor skills and then some survival and prepping skills that are important for you to know. So stick around. We're not done yet. I'll be right back. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show, you can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost store in Wilmington, Ohio at Caesar Creek Flea Market stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit zombieoutpoststore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to zombieoutpoststore.com. Get 10% off at checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. 
In this digital society, making connections is quickly becoming a lost art form. Yet, if you are a small business owner, building your network is the only way you can get ahead. Can these skills be learned? You bet they can. Read Nose to Nose Networking, no-nonsense in-person networking tips from a master. Who's the master? Well, who better to teach networking and friend-building skills than a golden retriever? The author, Melanie Hope, takes the antics of Abigail and translates them into the human experience. Through Abby, you will learn how to set your intention, build a network, and get into and out of conversations with Grace. If you love the Dog Abby segments on Counterculture Wise Radio, you will love Nose to Nose Networking even more. Find it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble in hard copy, Kindle, and Nook. Visit counterculturewise.com for direct links. Greetings and salutations, counterculturewise listeners. This is Maximilian von Riegelbeiser inviting you and yours to listen to me and mine. Join me, my sisters Abby and Fritzy, and my weekly guests, my father Jim and Mumsy Melanie, for Counterculture Wise. Max, it's not your show. And we're not your guests, Max. We're the hosts. You may want to rein it in a little bit, buddy. Very well. Tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific at counterculturewise.com for our amazing live variety show. You can even chat with us. If you ask me, though, it should be called Counterculture Max. Counterculture Wise. Radio with heart in mind. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here, even if it's just a dollar a month. Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. Welcome back, everyone. I'm the Barefoot Prepper, Nick Pierce. You're listening to Are You Ready? On this episode of Beyond the Gear, but your skills, self-reliancy skills, and that's what this is all about. Not necessarily having to stockpile a bunch of stuff or get a bunch of stuff, but stockpiling the knowledge in your head. You know, one of the things about survival is really just having an edge over someone else and being able to almost thrive instead of just survive for that matter once you get to a certain point. So... Outdoor skills are very important as well as your in-home skills. And this is beyond the garden, and this is more like, you know, if you ever think about like, wow, those people that are homesteading and just live off the land in their house out in the woods or someplace or out in the country, you know, some skills will that, that are on this list when it comes to these outdoor skills are very valuable even in an urban environment because, again, it's giving you a slight edge over someone else that needs something, but you know how to get it because you have the skills. You know what you're doing, and you know how to do it. So, for example, learning how to cut and split wood. Uh, my neighbor, I speak about my neighbor a lot in some of these, quite a few neighbors, but, um, you know, he'll go out there. He'll take a three-foot chunk of tree that, that was cut down. He did it with a chainsaw. And I, I have a video of this. He literally would take these things and did it by hand with an axe. Some of these stumps were about two and a half to three foot. And he would just go at it. And to him, he would just spend a day out there and it was therapeutic to him. He makes it look like nothing. Me on a stump that big, I struggle a little bit even though I know what I'm doing. But learning how to cut and split wood is very valuable. And then once you know how to cut and split wood, knowing how to start a fire is another essential skill that you should have. 
followed by once you have a fire going, knowing how to cook over an open fire. There is a slight learning curve there. Now, I'm working on a cookbook that hopefully I'll have out, if not by the holidays, the end of this year, uh, definitely by next year. And um, I'm going to do a nice little giveaway here on the program when I finally get it published and all that. Uh, it's still in the works. It's all written. All the recipes are done of all the campfire cooking and camping recipes and all that. It's it's really beyond burgers and hot dogs. This is like actually making real food, gourmet food almost, practically gourmet, on a campfire or in your campsite, um, like Dutch oven cooking, uh, foil cooking, in coals, uh, down and dirty, but gourmet results. And some interesting, and, and some of these recipes are so easy. But, you know, doing this for a while, I've, I'm sharing the tips and tricks about it. And I really want people to know that it's beyond that hot dog, marshmallow, s'mores, um, hamburger, typical, what you think of, put a can of beans next to the fire and eat it. We're, we're talking about not just grub, but gourmet. So learning how to cook over an open fire um, is a great skill to learn, and it's helpful in so many different scenarios. You know, a lot of times people think that, you know, along with all this food prep outside, like, you know, learning how to keep bees and harvest honey and all that, and that's great. That's a very specialty thing, even though it did make my list of skills I did want to throw a mention out there to it, even though I don't believe that a lot of people would really be able to get into that um, just on the, I'm prepping and I want to be ready for everything, so here's a bunch of bees and I'm going to learn how to harvest honey. It's a good thing to learn how to harvest honey. Whether you're a beekeeper or not, to me, that is one of those like specialty um, aspects of it that I don't think would be something that everybody would be able to get into. Now, if you do, that's great. If you're already doing it, perfect. But yet, I I think that there's a lot that you invest into it, including time and a lot of specialty knowledge beyond it just being a general um, item on uh, my list here that um, anybody should or would be able to do. I'm going to throw it out there. But I do want to mention that other things like milking a cow or a goat, raising poultry, small livestock, is something worth knowing. Knowing how to then take that livestock and use things beyond refrigeration and freezer uh, storage to be able to preserve it, such as smoking it or dehydrating it would would be a, a very valuable asset. Now, some of these outdoor skills go beyond just your temporary um, power outage. This goes into possibly your homesteading plan. This goes into uh, possibly a very, very long term uh, that could happen uh, that you need to be ready for. Uh, same thing with like well, the raising poultry, but building um, shelters, building animal shelters like chicken coops, barn enclosures, and stuff like that to keep your livestock safe, uh, making sure that other animals and predators don't get to them uh, is a very valuable skill, which goes kind of back to in the beginning and the basics with your home, learning how to use hand tools, uh, learning simple carpentry. Well, building is your next step beyond that. And really, animal structures can be down and dirty. They don't have to be a mansion or a beautiful home with a pool and a hot tub to sleep in. Um, you do want to make sure that your animals are sheltered and safe and kept in good conditions, uh, not just for their comfort, but to ensure their survival. Because when they survive, then you have uh, the, the think of the purpose of them. You need chickens for eggs, and you'll need them for meat. And there's other byproducts of chicken that you can make other products out of. Uh, same thing with any animal. Uh, and it go, going along with constructing animal shelters is also just constructing fencing, a fence. Um, how to put poles in the ground, what materials to use, 
what kind of a fence do you need to keep certain animals out and your animals in that enclosure? Um, now, you know, th there's also things such as like installing outdoor showers, which is great. You know, if you need to clean off before you come into your home, um, you know, some of this could be done uh, as, as impromptu improv. Um, it, it doesn't have to necessarily be all up to code, beautiful outdoor bathroom shower. Um, but, you know, I, I, down the shore, when, when I grew up in Jersey. And every place you went pretty much had an outdoor shower. It was, you know, hard pipe plumbed in. But you can really make something like that. Should we'll say you have to, you know, wash yourself off because there's uh, nuclear fallout before you come in home, in, in your home. Uh, you know, have ways to rig something up and have basic tools to be able to do it, to be able to build that so you're not contaminating the inside of your home. You know, what kind of enclosure do you need to once you wash off? Where do you put it? Um, you know, once you build the knowledge and what you're prepping for, you can then work on the plan and the know-how or even start building it ahead of time before you need it. But knowing these skills ahead of time, whether you do it or not, will help give you the edge and the advantage later on when you do need them. You know, it, sharpening an axe, knives, saws. Do you have the equipment you need to be able to do that? Or how about a composting toilet? What if your source system is down? What if there's a complete collapse? There's no sewage. There's no sanitation. And this could be going on for a while. Do you have a way to, we'll say, make an outhouse? Do you have the know-how and the skills to make an outhouse? You know, you don't want it to be right up against your home. You want it to be somewhat off away, a nice deep hole. And it's one thing to just keep digging a hole and putting waste down there and just manage it and bury it up as best you can. But... How about a composting toilet? So what I'm doing is I'm just throwing the ideas out there just so you can look up the how to do it and learn the skills to do it. If I, I could do a whole episode on making a composting toilet, building fences and barns and all this, um, which, hey, if I ever run out of material, I'll take an episode and go through each thing on this list and do it. But I don't think it's necessary at this point, especially with the vast library of information and sources out there uh, to be able to do some research on at least if it's just one thing off maybe each section of this list. Inside the basics, home, your garden, outdoors, and wait till we get to the survival stuff. Um, what else? Oh, speaking of raising livestock, learning what to do with livestock, housing livestock, keeping them safe, protecting your livestock... Well, all good things must come to an end. Not that all the labor was, all that good stuff, but the purpose of the livestock. Learning how to butcher an animal humanely. Yes, humanely. You've worked so hard to keep them comfortable and feed them, and, you know, I'm sure they kind of almost became a member of your family at one point. So, humanely, you want to be able to, I guess we can substitute butcher then for dispatch, um, what you've worked so hard to maintain, raise, and keep in good health and safety in order for it to serve its purpose. And that is smothered in shallots and a court bouillon of wine and ah, beautifully done over a nice fire that you learned how to build. But outside from that, um, masonry, which could come into, um, you know, building your barns and fencing and all that, uh, blacksmithing. And then, you know, a lot of folks really underestimate some of this in collecting rainwater. It's amazing how there's always something about water that makes it onto every list, even though a lot of folks really take it for granted. Collecting rainwater... Um, and, and doing it safely, um, keeping as 
much contamination out of it as possible. I was having a conversation with one of my buddies. He's got some property down in Kentucky. And his whole dream is just to put a bunch of these big 55-gallon buckets up on the roof of his structure uh, of this one cabin leveling the roof and, uh, you know, just collect rainwater and then have piping with valves on it that come down to flow through the faucets and everything. And I said, that's not going to work. That's ridiculous. First of all, if you just have open containers on the roof collecting water, a bird could fly in there and die. You know, you get a lot of contamination that's going to get in there. That's going to be in your water. You're just not going to let it be gravity-fed. Gravity-fed water system collection, all that is what the whole thing was. Just to come out of PVC pipes that you're going to run around to different areas um, with basins underneath it just to have water. I said, it's not going to be safe at all. You want some way to safely collect the rainwater if, if that's your goal in order to use it and it needs to be drinkable it needs to be able to be used for bathing if you have a, a first of all just the weight of it alone i was looking at pics of this place and i said you're going to put maybe two barrels on that roof tops and it's going to collapse um so learning how to collect rainwater in a safe way and practically use it um, you you want to be able to you know do a little research on that. Well, before we uh, we are coming close to running out of time this evening, but um, I do want to get into survival and prepping skills. And I'm going to keep this list short, even though there 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 are so many so many skills that you should learn. And I could sit here probably for another hour and just ramble on about the skills that you should know. Everything from knots to everything like, um, you know, nautical, you know, navigating by stars and, and, and stuff like that. Well, I, like I said, I want to keep this very basic, even though some of these skills may get more advanced. Like they have in the, you know, in the home skills and the gardening skills and the outdoor skills. I want these to be skills that, again, no investment or very little, if anything. Uh, I think of anything on this list that I really have, uh, the only thing you probably really need to uh, really buy in any of this is probably a compass and a map. Maybe some fishing gear. That's about it. Because almost everything on this list you could probably do with everything else laying around and and even you could probably even make a compass with anything you have laying around. So in our prepping and survival skills list, again, this episode is about skills and not gear. So one thing you should get good at and learning is foraging for wild foods. Okay? Now... A lot of times people lump mushrooms into this. If you don't know what you're doing with mushrooms, stay away from mushrooms. So we're just going to focus on the foraging for wild foods. Remember I always say, oh, you're going to go out in the wilderness and gather nuts and berries and survive the apocalypse like that. No, yeah, great, perfect. Um, there's a great book that I have, I've read, I've carried with me for years, and I still carry it with me. And that's the uh, Peterson's Guide to Edible Wild Plants. P it's it, Peterson's. Okay? It breaks it down in different categories. It has pictures of them. It breaks it down based on what they're used for. And all that. It is such a great book. Now, there's many other books out there. This one is just your typical, almost pocket-sized I mean, it fits in my pack so great. It is the only book that I still carry around. Because there's so many plants out there, you want to make sure you're going to eat the right thing. Yes, there's a section on mushrooms in there. Mushrooms are its own thing. Unless you really know what you're doing with mushrooms, just do yourself a favor and stay away from them. 
I mean, unless you want to sit there during the apocalypse surrounded by zombies tripping balls in the middle of the wilderness. You can. Or just get very sick and you no longer have to deal with the zombie apocalypse. You know, I've I've noticed that some mushrooms look like others and it's just like, not my thing. So I stay away from them. I've never been a big fan of mushrooms to begin with. I don't like them. I don't like the way they taste either. Well, the next thing you want to look at is maybe storing food in a root cellar. How to do it. Maybe how to make a root cellar. How to turn your basement into a root cellar. You also want to be able to store enough food and water for at least one year per person. This is where we get into that prepping area. Another thing you want to look at is using weapons correctly. Now, we spoke about earlier on in the home maybe learning some self-defense, like home protection. Maybe if you are able to take out someone that comes in your home with, we'll say, a firearm or a weapon, um, knowing what to do with it once you knock them out, get control of it, and whatever. Um, Using weapons correctly or even learning what items can be used as weapons is also very important. You know, it's very easy to hurt yourself when you have a weapon, even if it's not an edged weapon, even if it's not a blade weapon. It's very easy to hurt yourself on something that you're using as a weapon just because you don't know how to use it. And there are weapons out there that are very effective that don't require much skill to really learn some very effective and basic moves that could save your life one day. But the only thing it's going to do is hurt you if you do not know how to use it correctly. Speaking of weapons, how to make your own bullets, how to make your own ammo, how to reload shells, how to mold uh, bullets like lead and stuff like that into bullets to fire out of shells, cartridges, whatever. Okay? These are all very valuable things, and having the materials to do it, of course, okay, I guess we put another thing on the list. But as long as you know how to make your own bullets, maybe you don't necessarily need to have the stuff to do it. Maybe that's something that you may acquire or come into later on. But having the skill, that's important. This is all about learning and knowing how. Same thing with learning how to hunt and trap. Uh, Along with that, learning how to clean fish. Uh, Well, you have to catch the fish first, I guess. So you got to hunt, trap, and fish. And then knowing what to do with everything once you get it. So you got to clean the fish. You also got to learn how to, you know, field dress, uh, you know, whatever you hunt and trap. And uh, along with that, kind of preparing it. Uh, Building simple shelter. Shelter is another important one. Maybe this is one of those off-grid situations. Maybe you're out in the wilderness. Maybe this skills, this is beyond the home. This is is something you're going to need to learn how to do in order to survive, maybe until you get home, and we'll say a get-home situation, if you're not able to be home anymore in a bug-out situation. And I like just going out camping and just building shelters. I know, I'm the lean-to guy. Everything's always just, yeah, it's a lean-to. I like lean-tos. It's just fun. Well, I like lean-tos, and I I prefer the lean-to when I'm just out camping, doing my regular shelter building stuff, and just, you know, set up behind a campsite somewhere, my little off-the-campsite campsite campsite that I prefer to spend a lot of time in. You know, just gathering the raw materials, doing it from whatever I have. They're very easy to build. They are very down and dirty. I want to make sure they're very stable. One of them actually lasted some pretty heavy winds in a thunderstorm, big time. And... Uh, I just like the lean-to because I set it up in such a way as much as possible, because, again, you're stuck, you know, building, working with nature there, to kind of face one spot near this one lake so that I can actually lay there at night and just look out of my shelter, over the lake, out at the stars. And I'll just lay there for hours in my little... Down and dirty, built, lean to with my little Bluetooth speaker and cell phone, listening to Bruce Springsteen for hours, just staring at the stars. Um, so, learning how to build a shelter and simple shelter. Lean to is very simple. Now, I mentioned before a couple of things you may want to buy, and a compass is one of them to map. 
you know, we've we've discussed in the get home scenarios, bug out scenarios, uh, and those episodes and everything. Um, it's very important to have something like a topographical map or even just a regular map, just anything that shows you the layout of the land. And, of course, a compass. Learning how to read a compass, learning navigation techniques um, is very essential. Um, security measures when it comes to your property, to the perimeter of your property. And, uh, you know, bartering skills, very handy. And then... What about first aid out in the wilderness? Knowing what kind of natural plants, and this is another thing that Peterson is good at once you're good at identifying wild foods. There's also wild plants out there. Another great book was written by Michael Savage. Um, That was his talk radio name. I think it was Michael Allen, which is Earth Medicine, Earth Food. So check out that book. Um, Really focuses around a lot of the uh, medicinal medical plants. Um, based on a lot of the Native American traditions and practices. So check that one out. So in addition to that, healing broken bones, major illnesses, um, injury and all that, especially when out on the wilderness, and of course those bartering skills. Now, bartering skills are very handy. Even your knowledge that you may have based on the wisdom of the skills that you know now or that you are about to learn now that you've heard this list are a great bartering item in and of itself, sometimes even better than any bullet, knife, or piece of equipment that you may have, or anything that you've stockpiled beyond what you actually need, or anything that you may have that's strictly intended for bartering, your knowledge based on your skills may actually be one of the best barter items that you may have. The more you know, sometimes maybe the safer you will also be. Because think about it, folks. No one has ever sat there and said, oh, you're a doctor and you can save lives? Oh, kill them. We don't need a doctor. Oh, you're a weapons or firearms expert? Oh, kill them. We don't need our guns maintained. Sometimes when the fit hits the shan, your knowledge and your abilities may be all it takes to really keep you safe. Well, I hope that I helped you seriously think, prepare, and answer the question, are you ready? I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in and the support you give the show. Our guests, the callers, our friends in chat, uh, listeners, uh, clients, customers, everybody at the store, everything. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also find us on the web at nickpiercemedia.com. Click on the program's link. Find us on your favorite podcast platforms and on our home on Spreaker. To contribute to the show, go to Nick Pierce Media and click on the support the show link. Are You Ready Radio is the official podcast of Zombie Outpost in Wilmington, Ohio, and is an NP Media Group production. <laughs>